Welcome to End of Life University on YouTube. Today, I have a quick tutorial for you. I want to show you how to put together a ready-to-go bag uh, for use in, let's say, an end-of-life emergency or a time when you need to travel urgently to be with someone that you love who's at the end of life. And the reason I, I came up with this idea is because a number of years ago, I got a call one day that my own mother had suddenly declined. She was at home. She was being seen by a home care nurse who called me and said, your mother's not doing well at all. She cannot be alone. And I lived five hours away. So I called a couple of her friends who came and sat with her while I quickly grabbed a bag with a few changes of clothes in it and drove up there to take care of her. And once I got there, um, of course, it was an end of life situation. I sat with her during the last five days of her life. And while I was there, thought of a number of different things I wish I had been able to bring with me. I didn't have time, though, when I had to pack up so quickly and leave in order to be with her. And also, in the moment, I might not have thought of any of those things to bring along. It was only when I was there in the situation that it became clear to me, like, oh, gosh, if only I had this, if only I had that. So I've been thinking about this ever since. And in fact, we live up in the mountains near a national forest. And every year during fire season, we pack for ourselves a go bag, which has all the emergency items we would need to take with us in a hurry if we're told we have to evacuate immediately and there's no time to think about it, no time to pack anything. So we always have this go bag at the ready so we can run out the door at a moment's notice. And I thought, why don't I have that for end of life situations? And especially as we get older and many of our elders are also getting older and have certain health issues, there's pretty much a guarantee that at some point we will need to make an urgent journey somewhere. And being prepared for it just makes sense and it will make things so much better when you're there. So I'm going to talk you through my ready to go bag and what I have in it. So first of all, the bag itself, I just have this uh, small duffel bag it's carry-on size, so it could easily fit underneath the seat of an airplane. It actually folds up and packs up really small when there's nothing in it. But um, my intention is to keep it full of the items that I'll need if I do have to make a sudden journey. So any bag, backpack, duffel bag, anything that you have at home that's small enough to be a carry-on bag because it's possible that you will need to carry these items with you instead of packing them in your suitcase. So one of the first things, this is one of the most utilitarian things I could recommend. Some of these items are going to be totally practical. Others are, you know, a little more up to you if this is something that you feel like you could use or not. But having a very large scarf, it could be silk. This one is cotton, but um, they take up small space when they're folded. It's so useful. You can use it as a shawl if you get chilly when you're, say, you're sitting in a hospital waiting room or in the ICU, you can drape it over an end table, a nightstand, one of those um, across the bed tables in a hospital to just make the room more inviting. So you can use it as a little tablecloth. You can also put it across the bed where your loved one is, particularly in a hospital because all the linens are white and it's very stark and sterile. And just draping a lovely scarf over the top could make the room so much more inviting. You can also use this as a shroud for your loved one. You could, you could use it as a cover if you are washing or massaging their body and you want to help them stay covered. You could use it for a shroud after death as well um, to cover their face or cover their body. So it has so many different uses, simple, easy, just you probably already have a scarf like this at home that you could use and just fold it up. It's small. It fits easily in your bag, but it's there when you need it. And this is something I really wished I had when I was sitting with my mom, because I would have loved to have been prepared to take care of her body at the end of her life. And these apply whether you're seeing someone in their own home or a hospice house or a hospital or ICU. You don't know where you will be called to be with someone you love at the very end of their lives. And so I can't recommend this 
enough having a, a scarf like this on hand. The next thing I find really useful are these flameless candles, battery operated candles. Sometimes you're in a situation where you'd like to create softer lighting, especially in a hospital, but sometimes in people's homes as well. My mom's house had very harsh ceiling lights in place. And a, a candle like this, or, or a, a couple of them, or even some small tea lights, you can set this up. Maybe you're making a little display on a table and covering it with your scarf. You could put a candle on top and light it, and it will soften the lighting. It creates such a nice ambiance in the room. So I recommend having um, any size, any size candle and little tea lights work as well also and take up almost no space whatsoever. So the next thing, this is self-care, have some healthy, non-perishable snacks. And um, for me, that's jerky, some protein bars, uh, because you might be in a place where you can't find anything healthy or you don't have time. You don't have time to search for snacks or food my mom didn't really have anything like this available in her house. You might be in a hospital where they will offer you a little carton of applesauce or some crackers if it's in the middle of the night when you're hungry and you need something nourishing. So find non-perishable snacks that you love that will help you feel cared for and safe and able to take care of yourself. I also always, wherever I go now, I bring whoops, <laughs> little packets of instant coffee and my favorite tea bags. Because first of all, if you are in a hospital, hospitals always have coffee available on every floor, but frankly, it's terrible coffee. Oh, so many times it's burnt. The taste is terrible. So don't rely on hospital coffee if you're in that situation. Also, when I was caring for my mom, she had no coffee in the house whatsoever, not even instant coffee. She only had herbal tea. And I was barely sleeping every day. I needed some caffeine and she didn't have it in her house. So if like me, you like some caffeine and you like your coffee, bring it with you in an instant form so you can make it for yourself. You can, the hot water at the hospital should be just fine. You can mix it right up and have the beverages that you like that are soothing to you. Next, I recommend creating a playlist on your phone of, I will just call it vigil music, like soothing music that you like to listen to. There are some great ones that I've found on uh, Apple Music, uh, meditation music. There's some for sleep. There's some for calmness and stillness that you can just put on and play as very soft background music. It can be soothing for you, but also for everyone in the room. And again, you may be trying to create a, a lovely ambiance in the room. And so create your own playlist of music that you like, that you would love to listen to. That keeps you from having to listen to music that's being piped in somehow um, through speakers or also like when I was at my mother's house, she didn't have any music. She didn't have any music available that felt or sounded soothing. And so I tried to play a few. She had a CD player and a few CDs, but none of them were the right kind of music to set the mood that I wanted in the moment. So just bring your own and it's so easy to do on your smartphone, create a playlist on Spotify or on Apple Music and have that music available. You take it with you wherever you go. I'm going to create my own vigil playlist, which I will post on Spotify. And when that's done, I'll let you know. So you can just follow that playlist and you can also, I, I would love to receive recommendations if there are any any items that you have that you'd love to see in that list. So next I'm going to recommend have a little notebook and pen, like a little journal, something to take notes on, something to write, little letters to yourself. There are all kinds of times when you might be sitting there and thoughts will come to you. A memory will come, something that 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 you don't want to forget. Have a place to write it down. Also, if if you're speaking with doctors or nurses, Every day you might need to, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, you might have questions that you need to write down so you don't forget them when you ask them. So notebook and pen, that's essential. Just have it in there, even though you might always have something like that 
somewhere in your purse. If you keep it in your bag, you will know for sure you have something there. So next I'm going to recommend some books. I'm going to show you just um, a little, a couple of slides I created with the covers because I don't have uh, all the books here with me to show you. And um, I'm not recommending that you have all of these books, just pick one or two that you could keep in the bag. But these are books that could be really helpful to you as you're sitting at bedside. Maybe you would like to create a ritual of some sort. Maybe you'd like to read some poetry. Maybe you just want to read it for yourself for, you know, for your own comfort. Maybe you want to read it out loud or read it to your loved one or share it with others. So I encourage you to take a look at these books that I'm recommending or find your own books that have writings in them that would be soothing and comforting to you that you would feel good about sharing with other people or reading to your loved one. So the first book, this is a big book, a thick book, Sacred Dying by Megary Anderson. It's wonderful. It's full of lots of different rituals that you can use at the end of life. Um, it may be a little big to carry around with you, but it's a wonderful book. Nice to have on your bookshelf at the very least. Next is Vigil, the Poetry of Presence by Pamela McPherson. And this is also very lovely, full of beautiful poetry that I highly recommend. Um, as you're sitting vigil, I think some of these poems will resonate with you. And again, they're things that you could share with your loved one or share with others or just read them to yourself for your own comfort. Next, the book Home Funeral Ceremonies by Donna Belk and Katie Unalisi. And this book has amazing, simple rituals that you can do before death, at the time of death, and after death. And um, some, of the, some of the items that I have to share with you here came from suggestions in this book. And it's a thin book. It's very simple. You could read through the book and even plan ahead some things you feel comfortable doing with your loved one and make sure your bag has some of the items that you might need. And, and I'm recommending some of those items for you here that I am keeping in my bag. Also, Present Through the End by Kirsten DeLeo. I, I interviewed Kirsten about this book. It's beautiful. It's a, a caring companion's guide for accompanying the dying. She has lots of poems in this book as well, but also lots of rituals for forgiveness and presence and love. Just, it's very beautiful. So I highly recommend having this book as well. It will be, it would be a thing of comfort to be able to read it as you're sitting at the bedside of a loved one. And the book Safe Passage by Molly Fumia, this has been an old standby of mine, Words to Help the Grieving. Um, it's filled with short passages that you can read that are very comforting, helpful if you are experiencing anticipatory grief or after the death, if you're in a time of grief and maybe you want to share some of these um, passages with other people. And I put in my book, The Tao of Death, because it has the 89 verses from the Tao Te Ching written from the perspective of death, the way of death. And so also some of these verses, again, they're very spiritual and mystical in some ways, but they might be things that you would enjoy reading and contemplating if you're sitting vigil, vigil with someone who's dying. So we'll move on. The next thing I have to recommend, this isn't a really practical item, is a headlamp. You can also bring a flashlight, but the reason a headlamp is nice is because it leaves you hands free. If you are in a darkened room and you want the room to stay dark so your loved one um, doesn't have harsh lighting, but say you drop something or you have a medication bottle that you need to read and you can't see it or you can't you can't read your book this little headlamp that's like has adjustable intensity of the light is really helpful put it on your head uh, or what you know what if you drop something that rolls under the bed that you have to look for you don't want to have to turn on the room lights and ruin the ambiance just to find whatever it is you dropped a headlamp like this can be re really useful so you know, that's maybe a, an extravagant item, but I find it extremely helpful to have. And especially with my eyesight, I have to have really good lighting in order to read small print and the headlamp definitely provides that. So now we're moving on to more, some more ceremonial items in a way, um, instead of just simply practical or self-care items, though this could be self-care. I have this small acrylic bowl it may sound really weird to travel with a bowl, but the thing is, this bowl is so useful 
especially if you're trying to create a beautiful space, you can fill the bowl with water and float flowers in it. You can also, you can fill it with flower petals, leaves, um, pine cones, or stones that you find outside. It's so beautiful to create your sacred space and to create something lovely. And you could just put a little arrangement of flowers in here. But the other practical thing you can do with this is use it to bathe your loved one. So bring a washcloth along with your bowl. You can fill it with warm water if you want to bathe your loved one, bathe their face or hands. You'll have this available and you don't have to go searching for something if you're in their house or if you're in a hospital again um, or long-term care facility, you will have something you brought with you that you could use. I want to recommend a, a product to you that I love. It is Green Burial Wash from King Carico. It's made for doing a full body washing and preparing a body after death um, for burial, but you can use a sm smaller quantity of it with your bowl and some water and just bathe, bathe your loved one's face and arms and hands and legs, perhaps, if you want to have some sort of a ritual after death, um, to feel like you're caring for them and caring for the body. This is wonderful. It is in a glass bottle and you could pour it into smaller plastic bottles and maybe you wouldn't need the whole bottle. But uh, so in plastic bottles, smaller size, you could carry it on uh, online and on in your carry on bag if you needed to do that. Another item to have is some sort of oil. This is anointing oil from Jerusalem. It has a wonderful fragrance to it. Um, you could again use this and the rituals in some of the books I've mentioned talk about using oil. You can put it on your loved one's forehead, on the palms of their hands, on their feet, and it creates a lovely scent in the room. It's also, it's very spiritual and it's a lovely way of kind of honoring the physical body itself. So this is just a tiny bottle of this anointing oil from Jerusalem, but you could use essential oils if they're okay to use on, on the body physically as well, if you have something like that. Also for the, for the body wash, you could get lavender body wash or something else that you could use that, that you happen to like the scent of. You don't necessarily have to use the green burial wash, but I particularly like it. Another, this item might sound really strange, but I recommend bringing along some ribbon and um, just either, you know, a long piece of it or something. So it may, you know, you may not think about how that could be useful, but here are some things I've done with it. One is tie back the curtains on a window because you might have um, like draperies or curtains that you don't want to open fully, but you want to tie them back so that a little light comes in near the bottom of the window. You don't want the whole entire window open. You can also use it. You could tie back your own hair, your loved one's hair. You can use it like to tie a bouquet of flowers, but there's a lovely ritual that Megary Anderson recommends in her book that involves a ribbon like this. And it's a, it's a ritual while your loved one is still um, able to talk with you and converse with you. And you have them perhaps talk about things that they regret or unfinished business that's still present in their life. And for each story that they tell you, maybe it's someone, you know, they, they wish they hadn't hurt someone or they wish they hadn't done something, you tie a knot in the ribbon, tie it loosely, but tie a knot in the ribbon until you have multiple knots, however many things they need to tell you. And then you do a ritual with them where you ceremoniously talk about letting go and releasing that tangled emotion of guilt and regret, whatever is present. And you physically untie the knot in front of them to make the ribbon smooth once again. And so it's like a physical representation of letting go of some of those regrets that we've been hanging on to. And so I suggest just a little bit of ribbon because you never know what you may be able to do with it. It doesn't take up very much space. It's a small, simple item, but it could come in very handy and it may help you as part of a ritual that you would like to do with your loved one. Next, uh, this is something that um, I like for myself, even though um, 
I'm not using it uh, as part of a religion, but I like these mala beads. And sometimes I just, I wear these as a necklace. But what I like about them is that you can, they're kind of good fidget beads. You can use these beads and move one at a time. And when you're using them correctly, you're saying, you would be saying a mantra or some sort of a prayer. Rosary beads are similar. You could use them as well. Um, but the nice thing is, it's, it's something to do with your hands. And what I've read from studies is that when you keep your hands occupied, doing something just like this, it actually helps alleviate anxiety. And so you count the beads, maybe all you're doing is counting your breaths, you know, breathe in, move one bead, breathe out, move one bead. And it helps you pass the time. It keeps your hands occupied, helps you with anxiety. And they're simple. You just wear it around your neck and you have it with you uh, as a little necklace. They also come in bracelet form. So you can um, wear a bracelet and have these beads, or again, a rosary would work or, or any other type of bead, if that sounds soothing to you. But I find it helpful when I'm sitting in a place where I need to be still and quiet, and in more of a meditative, contemplative state. And I'm going to be there for a while because I'm sitting vigil and there's nothing I can do to speed up the process. I'm just there holding space, being present. Sometimes it's very nice to have something quiet and small to do with my fingers in that moment that helps me maintain that meditative state um, one bead at a time. So Again, something simple and small that you can just have in your bag in case you need it. You may not necessarily. And um, another thing I don't have an example of here would be some incense. If you if you want to, after the death, um, in some way, prepare the room to make the room kind of a, a new space, you could burn some incense. One thing I do have is this little... Um, smudging kit if you're a person who's into this using sage for smudging it's lovely it comes with a little holder a shell um, some sage and a little feather and it's lovely it packs up into a small box and you can carry that with you but that may be that's kind of out there for a lot of people not something they'd be into but just in case you are I thought I would mention that you know that's something you're not going to be able to get a hold of at the last minute if you're sitting in a hospital I'm pretty sure the gift shop is not going to have something like that so if it's something that you like that you value doing a ritual like that, have the implements there to be able to do it. So those are my items. That is my ready to go bag and what I have packed. I'm sure you can probably think of some things you would include. Oh, one, one thing I would say, a change of underwear. This would be my mother's advice to always have a change of underwear. And if you've ever spent the night in a hospital room, sitting next to someone's bed or in a waiting room, you know how wonderful it could be in the morning to have just a change of underwear. And you know what? You could use your bowl and washcloth just for yourself to clean up a little bit and freshen up the next day. And so um, be prepared, be ready. You know, things happen. They happen unexpectedly. And we get calls sometimes on a moment's notice. And our loved ones need us to be at their side. And how wonderful would it be to have the things you need to be fully present with them, to be able to create a sacred space as you sit with them at the very end of their life. And, and how wonderful for yourself, great self-care to bring along things that will bring you comfort and nourishment as you are providing that support for those you love. So I am going to leave a, a handout of the whole list of items that I've suggested uh, for you that you can download, and I hope you find it handy, and maybe you'll create your own ready-to-go bag. Until um, the next time I'm with you, bye-bye.